Yo, 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 what is going on guys? It's Noah here from Six Flow Automations. In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through the entire process start to finish of building and developing an AI voice agent for a real client. If you guys find this content useful or wanna support the channel, hit that like button, drop a sub, and let's jump right into it. All right, guys, the real world use case and topic of this video is going to be building an AI voice agent for a MMA gym here in Ontario, Canada. We have just recently signed this client, so I'm going to show you the true process of how I build these voice agents to later deploy into their business. Now, the client has specifically asked for an FAQ voice agent with dynamic call transfer capabilities, meaning that it can transfer to multiple people. Now, that being said, the focus of this video is going to be setting up the agent from scratch, meaning we are going to to build the global prompt we are going to set up the global settings and we are going to build the knowledge base to have the agent pull knowledge as efficiently as possible then i'm going to walk you through the best methods for testing your agent to make sure it performs as optimal as possible once you hand it over to the client i'm not going to be going over stuff like post call analysis or call transfer setup or things like implementation because i have videos on our channel that break those down in full. So if you wanna check those out, just click on our channel below and you will see those on our page. The very first step we're going to do is actually head over to the business's website so we can do a detailed web scrape and grab all the information we can so we can start building the knowledge base since that is the first step in developing an AI voice agent. All right, so I am going to skip over the part where I actually go and scrape all the information from the website because I don't wanna give any of the client's information away, but I am going to walk you through exactly what I just did. Essentially, I went to their website and I pretty much copy and pasted every part of their website into a Word document, which I then converted to a PDF, which you're looking at right here. So this is a detailed document with about 30 pages of pure information, all scraped from their website. All right, so once you've complete the entire web scraping process, we are ready to start building the knowledge base. So the next thing we are going to do is head over to your LLM of choice. For me, I use Anthropics Claude for two main reasons. The first one is that its MCP integration is just amazing. And I use the retail AI and N8N MCP CPs all the time. If you guys want to learn more about that, I'll link those videos up above. And the second reason is that I've developed an advanced project within Claude that is specifically designed for building voice agent prompts and voice agent knowledge bases. I will be dropping the documentation you need to build this project on your own in our school community, which you can find the link in the description below. So now the next thing we're going to do is actually drop the document with all the web scrape knowledge into the project just like that. And now we're simply going to tell Claude that we have a new use case for building a voice agent for an MMA gym and that I've attached a document with the entire web scrape from that client's website. And then I'm going to ask it to return the knowledge base in its specified format. All right, so now that I've sent off the information from the website and told Claude what to do. You can see that it automatically is starting to build the knowledge base. But to give you guys a little bit more background on why we format knowledge bases like this, it's because retail uses a method called chunking when searching for information through a knowledge base, which essentially means that the agent is going to search up common words that the user used to find the information it needs from the knowledge base. And you can actually adjust the chunking settings in the voice agent, which I'll show you once we get to building it. But formatting it in this way where it's essentially XML embedded in Markdown just makes it a lot easier for the agent to find information within a long knowledge base, which not only reduces the latency, but also increases the accuracy of information the voice agent is providing. All right, so it looks like Claude has now finished the knowledge base. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it and I will paste it in a blank Word document so that I can convert it to a PDF. All right, guys, we have successfully completed the first major step in developing an AI voice agent, which is creating the knowledge base. I do want to point out, however, that the knowledge base may not be perfect off the first try, meaning that it may be missing some information or it may be pronouncing some words oddly, stuff like that, that you will later realize during the testing phase. So I just wanted to give you a heads up that you may need to tweak the knowledge base a little bit. Now, the next step is going to be actually building the knowledge base. So we are going to head over to retail AI. Now, 
Now, if you guys are new to Retail AI or haven't signed up yet, please hit that link in the description below to make your account. It will just give us a little bit of a cut since it is our Retail AI affiliate link. So that would help us out tremendously and it won't cost you anything extra. So that would be really appreciated. But let's hop into Retail now and automatically you'll be greeted by this dashboard. Again, if you're new to Retail AI, I've made a complete beginner breakdown on the entire platform, which I will link up above. I suggest you guys check that out before just hopping right into it because I'm not going to be covering everything here. But let's go ahead and attach our new knowledge base by heading over to the knowledge base under the build section in the left side tab bar. And we will just press on the plus button right here. We'll give this a name. I'll just call it knowledge base and then we can add a document. So once you've selected your file, just simply press save. It'll take a few seconds to load up. You can see here it's saying in progress. But if you give that a quick refresh in five seconds, it should be automatically loaded. All right. And there you go. Let's head back over to our agents tab. Let's go ahead and create a new agent. We will select voice agent and we will actually be using a single prompt agent for this uh, tutorial. The reason we're not using a conversational flow agent for this is because the build is really not that complicated since it's just a simple FAQ agent that has call transfer capabilities. Everything can be done within a single prompt agent. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to press start from blank and then I will press create. Now I'm not going to go through all the settings. I do that in so many other videos. So if you want, just go check out our other videos, such as the beginner one that I just linked a little bit ago, but you can choose your voice. We do want to stick with GPT 4.1 as our LLM and the functions that we are going to add off the bat. You can already see an end call function is already added, but we will, however, add the call transfer. And I'm just going to save it for now because we will set that up later. I just want to remember to do it. So I'm going to add it now. Now. now let's go ahead and attach the knowledge base. So I'm going to press add and I will select the knowledge base that we just added And here in advanced settings is what I was telling you about the chunking. So here you have chunks to retrieve. So this is the maximum number of chunks to retrieve from the knowledge base in a range of one to 10. This pretty much means that anytime the agent calls on the knowledge base, as in it needs to retrieve information to answer the user's question, how many chunks of the knowledge base is it going to read? So for a more complex agent, you probably want a longer knowledge base. And in that case, you probably want a higher number of chunks to retrieve because the specific information it needs to find may be situated between multiple chunks. But for a simpler agent like what we're doing, I think three trunks is more than enough. So we will just keep it at that. And the second setting that we can adjust is the similarity threshold. So adjust how strict the system is when matching chunks to the correct context. So that pretty much means how specific is the agent going to be searching for its information. So you can see here, it says a higher setting gives you fewer, but more similar matches, meaning that the higher this value is, it's going to give you fewer matches, but the matches are going to be more accurate to what the user had just said. So I think the generic settings for what we're doing is great. So three uh, chunks to retrieve and 0.6 similarity threshold is great. I'm just going to leave it at that. But that is something you can definitely play around with. If you notice that your agent isn't retrieving the information that it has access to, or it's retrieving too much information where the accuracy is taking a hit. Now that we have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and quickly go through some speech settings. So responsiveness, I'm going to lower this just a little bit because one, sometimes the interruption sensitivity gets messed up. I'm also going to lower this a little bit. I will enable back channeling and I will put a frequency of let's say 0.2 and speech normalization. Always enable that. I will go down to call settings and I will lower the end call on silence to let's just do 40 seconds max call duration. Let's do 15 minutes. Sure. Now the next thing we are going to do is have the agent speak first because this is going to be an inbound calling agent and we will just choose a custom message and I'm going to just say something like, hi there, thanks for calling MMA Jim. I'm not going to give you guys the actual name of the client again, just for privacy reasons. And then I will just say, how can I help you today? Another thing I should know, which I don't often say, is that if you're going to be using post-call analytics and sharing stuff like uh, MP3 recordings or transcripts and stuff like that with the client, you actually have to make it known that this call may be recorded. So I usually leave that in the um, opening message, like just a heads up, this call may be recorded for quality, quality purposes. Just something simple like that so the person on the other line knows that this call is being recorded 
and if they are not okay with it then they can hang up but it is um, verbal agreement by simply just saying that in the opening line. All right, guys, so now it's time to build the actual global prompt for this agent. So of course, we're not going to do this all on our own. We are going to use an LLM. So I'm going to head back into Claude and I'm going to say return the global prompt for this agent in Markdown. The reason I specify in Markdown is because it tends to always export it in Markdown, but sometimes the platform converts the markdown into like text element. So when you use a hashtag, it's going to put it as a header or an asterisk, it'll just bold it. So we want it in a markdown window so that we can actually copy it in markdown. And the second thing that I am going to tell it is to keep keep the global prompt short as to keep the latency be below 2000 milliseconds. The reason I specify this is because in this project, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it will, it will return a long global prompt, which makes the agent very accurate, but the latency a little bit uh, longer. So for this use case, I want a quicker latency because all the knowledge the agent really needs is already in the knowledge base. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to press save and let's see what it does. All right. So it looks like Claude is done building the global prompt and I just did a quick scan through and I can already tell that it needs some improvement. But the reason is because I didn't really give Claude that much context. I didn't mention much about the call transfer, so it didn't really put in any specifics on when it should transfer calls and stuff like that. So I highly suggest that when you're asking Claude or GPT or whatever to build the global prompt, you give it as much detail as you possibly can from whatever you collected from the client. So in this case, all I asked it was to build the global prompt, but really what I should have given it is that the prompt should include call transfer situations, only transfer to this person under these conditions, only transfer to this person under these conditions, and so on. You also may need to give information of when to pull from the knowledge base. So if anyone asks about class scheduling or membership pricing or cancellation policies, refer to the knowledge base, stuff like that. But let's go ahead and go with this. I'm going to copy this. We'll head back into retail and I'm going to paste it. All right. So now we have our prompt in our voice agent and I know I'm blocking it off because it contains information about the client that I can't just share with any anyone, but I will let you know that Claude did do a good job developing the first stage of the prompt, but I want to make it very clear that this prompt is going to be heavily edited as you go through your testing phase. But that being said, we are pretty much ready to enter the testing phase. Once you read through the prompt, make sure it sort of covers all the bases like communication style, context, personality, objective and role, and maybe a few examples, then you're good to go. Like the next thing you need to do is just heavily test because each test you do, it's going to tell you what you need to change about the prompt or the knowledge base or even the global settings, right? So the whole thing about developing voice agents is just testing and trying to make it fail as much as possible. There's two methods to testing your voice agent. The first is audio testing. So this is where you can test the global settings, how the agent sounds, is it responding too slow, is it pronouncing words weirdly, and things like that. And then the next thing you want to test is its specific responses. Is is it getting the information correctly? Is it consistent with providing information when the same question is asked over and over? And I'm going to show you the best way to test both of these. So the first thing I'm going to show you is testing the audio. This is very simple to do. You can do it in web. You can see on the right side of my screen here, there is test your agents. All you have to do is press test and listen to how it sounds, ask it a few questions, see if it's audio is sounding good, if it's response time is good, and if it's pronouncing anything oddly. Hi there, thanks for calling MMA Gym. Just a heads up, this call may be recorded for quality purposes. How can I help you today? Hey there, how you doing? I'm just wondering if you guys teach Muay Thai at your gym. Hey, I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Um, yes, we definitely teach Muay Thai here. Are you interested in classes for yourself or maybe for a child or teen? I'm interested for myself. I don't have any training though, so I'm wondering if there's any free trial that I can test or something like that. Awesome. We love helping beginners get started. So um, yes, we offer a free trial class for Muay Thai, so you can come in and see if you like it. Would you like to book a spot for a free trial session? All right, so off the bat, you can see that the audio is honestly sounding very good. I would probably just lower the back channeling frequency a little bit because I don't like how it said um too much. Stuff like that is what you're going to notice with the audio, but off the bat, it honestly did sound really good. Now, the next thing that we want to test heavily is going to be the information it pulls from the knowledge base and from the global prompt. Now, you could do this by just simply testing your agent over and over again using the audio test, but I'm going to show you a much better and more efficient method for testing the information that it pulls. To do that, we're actually going to head over to test chat. And we're going to go over to manual chat and you can see automatically that it's going to give you the opening message, right? So here you can actually just type what you want to say. So I'm going to say something like, do you teach Muay Thai, right? 
and then it's going to say yes we teach muay thai um are you looking for classes for yourself or someone else right so now here's the cool part in testing i can have it regenerate that response over and over and over again to see if it's consistent so again it says yes we do teach muay thai are you looking for your classes or someone else and i can go again and again and again just ensuring that it's consistent so it knows that we teach muay thai so now if i ask how much does the muay thai membership membership cost and i send that off let's see what it says all right so it says great question are you interested in an adult or youth child so i'm just going to say adult and let's see what it pulls so it says 120 dollars per month for unlimited classes right now if i want to see that it pulls that information again let me just regenerate that again all right so it says 120 dollars again for unlimited classes so you can see that that seems like it's pulling the information correctly from the knowledge base another cool thing is you can regenerate this entire conversation by hitting this button right here so now it's going to just walk you through the exact conversation that you just had and once again we can see that it said 120 dollars per month for unlimited classes so that's all great you pretty much want to repeat this process over and over and over and over and over again as much as you possibly can so that you can find every single bug with this voice agent and once you finally feel like you're confident in your voice agent is when you can send it off to the client i'm not going to go through the entire test process of this voice agent because it does take a long time you have to put in the effort to get as good a product as possible right so what i suggest just is you just repeat this method over and over and over again until you feel like it's getting all the information from the knowledge base correct and the audio sounds great every single time now i've noticed that sometimes it can pronounce words a little bit oddly and you sort of notice that when you test with the audio now to add pronunciation you can simply go under speech settings and you can add one right here so the word let's say it pronounces the word gi weird like a gi you wear for jujitsu it keeps on saying guy right so i'm going to put in the word gi and i'm going to type in the phone name which would be like this right and i'll press save so now it's going to actually pronounce that word correctly you can also add pronunciation to the global prompt itself but this function does seem like it works pretty well in retail and that's pretty much it guys you're going to sit in the testing phase for a very long time building the initial stages of the agent is really not that difficult it does not take that long especially with the help of gpt or claude it's really about the testing phase making sure that your agent is as good as possible now once you finish testing is when you actually get to implementation which I have an entire video on breaking down in our school communities. So again, if you guys want to know how to do that, just hit the link in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, again, hit that like button, drop a sub, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.